Hi, Greg at Best Choice Trailers. Today I'm going to take you for a walk around the Shore Track 6x10, 9,900 pound GVW Shore Track low profile hydraulic dump trailer. Shown here, everything is standard equipment. There's very few available options for this trailer, uh, but again, there are some, but everything you see here is all standard equipment. Uh, speaking of options, probably the only two on this that would be uh, remotely common tarp kit, it's already prepped for it. And then your spare tire mount is standard. Uh, the spare itself would be an option. So again, those are two of the only options primarily available. There's other stuff as well, but those would be the two most common. So let's start out up front, take a look at this trailer. So it's two and five sixteenth inch stamp coupler. It does have the 7,000 pound drop leg jack. That is now standard. So you notice that the setback jack does sit back another roughly six inches or so farther than the A-frame. That gets it out of the way, your truck tailgate. Also gives the ability to have the drop leg jack. So you've got the top line handle, that's gonna wind the outer sleeve, but then you've got this inner sleeve and that is what gives you a lot more adjustment on this style jack than a traditional bottle jack. Uh, no need to ever carry around a wood block or similar, this gives you all the height adjustment you'll need. Uh, you'll notice it does have the safety chains as required by law. Also has holders for them in the A-frame, which is nice. Uh, also seven way, uh, seven pin blade sealed wiring harness. Uh, notice it does have an integ integrated uh, plug holder. It's also got the blade style common on most all modern pickup trucks. Uh, Short track, if you haven't already noticed, is very user friendly. Um, they don't uh, win, I guess you could say necessarily just on features alone, but they will win against most manufacturers. Uh, when you look at all the little details and I'm going to point some more of those out. So this sealed wiring harness is grommeted and runs in frame. It's also got the uh, breakaway cable again as required. Uh, one of those unique user-friendly details, uh, the jack on these uh, are bolt on, not weld on. If you ever want to replace it, change it, whatnot, very simple to do so. Also, on these 7K jacks, it does have a greaser, gives you some extra serviceability. Also, it's a triple tube tongue, not a traditional A-frame. You've got your extra crossbar going back to center to give some extra support. You also notice that it's a tube frame, not channel. A lot in the industry, we use channel, and channel works, but tube gives some additional strength uh, to the frame, gives some extra rigidity, uh, takes that torsional load on better than does channel, which will flex a little bit easier. Uh, one important thing too on tube, you just got to make sure that you keep uh, corrosion and whatnot uh, out of the inside, which uh, this is capped at the end of the the tongue. It's not to say that elements couldn't get in elsewhere, but generally it would take quite a while uh, with the limited exposure on these. So while we're up front here, let's also take a look at the toolbox. You notice it's got a diamond plate lid instead of the traditional smooth, gives it a little bit different look. Uh, currently they're using a KTI pump with a DECA deep cycle marine battery. You've had very good luck with the DECAs um, on these. Now, while we're at the battery, let's take a look. There's actually two extra wires. Uh, that's because this uh, jumper cable, well, I shouldn't say a jumper cable in a technical sense, but this uh, extra wire that's outside the seven pin plug that goes to the main harness, that is an auxiliary line charge off your truck it's about a 3.7 amp hour charge. So some folks think that whenever you plug this into your truck, that that whole line is gonna run direct off the truck and that is incorrect. So basically, you're gonna run this off a self-contained deep cycle battery. The little bit of charge you get off the truck is via this line set right here. I believe these are normally 14 gauge, which it is if we get real close. So 14 gauge allows about a 3.7 amp hour charge. What that means is if that battery's dead, you're not dumping this trailer. Uh, that said, the pump takes about 200 amps roughly to run. If you do get it all the way up, you can get the bed down contrary to what some folks will tell you. Uh, coils only take about two to 10 amps to run. Uh, pump takes much more than that. So if you've got a little bit of juice in the battery, even if the bed's up, you will get it down. Now, it's not going to, this is a power up, power down system, which is why we have two coils here. Uh, if, uh, if you don't have the power to power it down, it's gonna free fall, it's gonna gravity down. All it needs is the one coil to open to allow it to do so. And it's gonna put that extra fluid that's in the line that you're essentially draining 
it's going to put that back into the reservoir and it's going to eventually overflow out that red cap and whenever you put it up after you charge the battery fully you're going to need a little bit more fluid to do so, so anyway that's enough up front so we've got an integrated uh, tarp shroud that's in the front bulkhead front and rear bulkhead allow you to drop a 2x10 in this trailer uh, with very little effort you can pull it in and out as much as you'd like or you can make it semi-permanent uh, what we like to do is put a two by in and then lag underneath right around where the stake pockets are uh, to where all you need to do is pull those two lags out with those in it actually makes it very strong we also throw one normally up front here uh, some folks if they do a side extension with the tarp will actually notch them out some guys want to make them permanent run the two by in and then drill out for the tarp you can do it either way so that shroud's about a foot. It would take your side up to about two foot, eight inches. Standard side height on these is 20. Industry is anywhere from 18 to 24. The 20 inch side generally works out pretty well. It gives you about all the cubic volume you need inside for the average uh, user, uh, depending on if you're hauling stone or, or sawdust or you know whatnot. So the side extensions do make it nice for the guys hauling the uh, lesser weight material. So this integrated keyway in the side gives a lot of strength with adding very little additional empty weight. We like that about Shore Track. Generally, the trailer is as strong as it needs to be for the job in hand. Side step, it's got a neat punch plate design that was newer for the last year or so. So you'll notice it's got the five inch tube tongue and it's also got the five inch tube mainframe and then also a four inch tube bed frame. So in the industry, we see some variation. Some manufacturers actually take the sidewalls down and form it in, and there's no bed frame at all. Some use a three inch uh, tube bed frame. I've seen four inch channel, four inch angle. Again, this is four inch tube. Uh, not a whole lot heavier, but a little heavier than some that we see in the industry. But more importantly, the tube keeps it from flexing and, and twisting. This trailer is powder coated. I would say more importantly than the finish is how they prep this unit. The steel is stored inside. It's uh, it's uh, transported, uh, tarped. Um, it uh, does get blasted finished product, not individual components. Gets phosphate washed and it gets uh, zinc primered. Uh, very durable finish of, of the brands we carry. Uh, I would probably say this is the most durable finish of any of the brands. Bullet LED lights, standard equipment. Uh, this is under 10,000 pounds, so it's not required to have reflector tape, but you'll notice there is reflector tape running down the long sill. This also has a double broke fender. Uh, double broke just gives some additional strut to that instead of a single. Uh, it's also a tread plate. It's not a smooth um, plate fender. It's also got a radial tire, six lug. It's a 225-75R15 load range D. It's an eight ply tire. It's on a silver wagon wheel. You'll notice the green cap. That is a nitrogen filled tire. Nitrogen, uh, one of the key elements of nitrogen would be it doesn't have the uh, moisture that your traditional air filled tire will help keep it from dry rotting from the inside out. Uh, behind the black cap here is an easy loop hub. There is a grease cert behind there. You can do your own bearing maintenance. This also has the newer style FSA forward self adjust brakes. Some also call it the never adjust. Uh, just like a car, that brake is going to self-tension throughout the life of it to where there would be very little, if any, additional maintenance required. This particular unit, I like how they uh, box out the rear end of the tube. Uh, they also do double pass on the, on the hinge area. It's also got a grease zert uh, for some serviceability. This gate does have uh, combo spreader feature uh, functionality. So you can open it up like a traditional barn door. A little bit hard to do with one hand, but doable. So you can barn door like so, but then we can also use the spreader gate itself. So we would simply set the gauge where we want it to be, pull the pin, put it in the holder while, you, while it's in use, and then you would simply pull the handle back and spread it at the depth that you would like. Now, new for about the last year or so, uh, would be a little bit heavier hinging. It's got grease zerts on it. Of course, on your door, you've got your zerts as well. Also, they boxed out either end, put a little reinforcement at the bottom. 
This also has the, the taller cam bar lock. I've seen some that just put a little pin down at the bottom, kind of leaves the top side of the gate a little bit vulnerable. Uh, one of the things we like too, their door hold back mechanism, very simple. It's just got a safety chain with your cover. That would go against your uh, carabiner hooks here. Also, you've got rope rings going down the side uh, that would hook to the grommets and the tarps as well. I missed those earlier. So the door's fairly simple to use, even with one hand you can do it. Close it. So we like to take and cross these. So this side here would just go down in and then take that chain over to the other side. Just gives some extra safety. So this is a one piece sheet floor. You'll notice it is full seam welds. If you look at some of the other ones in the industry, a lot of times they are stitch welded, not full seam. Notice that the uh, D-rings are standard. They're up out of your way at the bottom of the wall. And then you've got one front center as well. I believe this unit has about a 25, 26 inch floor height. It's got a 20 inch wall, so roughly about 46 to the top of the wall. One nice thing about the bulkhead, puts the lights up where the folks behind you can see them. Less chance of them. They're not paying attention on their phone running into the rear end of your trailer. Uh, this unit does have a wider ramp. That was something new for roughly last year as well. It's now about an 18 inch ramp. I believe a lot in the industry are going to be 15, 16, so you get an extra inch or two. Traditional three inch channel ramp, angle iron runners. Uh, this guy here at the back makes it very simple to push or pour you need. Now this is a little detail, but uh, if you look around the industry, we have a lot of our manufacturers that have a gate uh, ramp holder that folds down and oftentimes the zerts or lack of zerts on the hinges wear out over time. This is a very, very short track S design. Very simple. It's a weighted pin, so as soon as you hit your first bump, it's coming down. No chance of that coming out. It's got a simple roll pin to pull it out if you ever want. Uh, also, hook bars on these, they made a little bit heavier uh, within the last year or so. Those are actually the same ramps that would come on a 14,000 pound dump trailer. Certainly plenty of capacity for a little 6x10. This is a 9,900 pound GVW. It is available as well on a 5 lug 7,000 pound GVW. Uh, largely, they'd be the same except for the, uh, the axles, tires, and then the 7K has a 3 inch cylinder, and we'll get to that here in a second. Spare tire mount on these is also standard. So we said earlier, this is a power up, power down unit. You can tell that based on the two solenoids there. So let's show you, uh, toolbox is lockable by the way. And again, two buttons, power up, power down. You'll notice it is notched on the box too, makes it nice. So you'll see the undermount ramps. This being the 10K, it has the larger four inch cylinder. The 7K version is gonna get the three inch cylinder. So I will wait for this to go up. I'll also show you, look at all the wiring, how it's grommeted, sealed, ran in frame. A lot neater and tidier than some of what we've seen in the industry on dump trailers. Also on the uh, passenger side there, you'll see the safety prop. Uh, if you're ever working on the hydraulics, nice little feature. So this again is a four inch cylinder. We find this to be about right. We've got some manufacturers that use a five inch cylinder, a little bit oversized, uh, certainly allows you to lift plenty, but this will lift everything that you're legal for plus some. Uh, what we find is the five inch cylinder just takes longer to raise the bed. Again, the three inch cylinder is standard on the 7K version of this. So let's take a look at the ramps. I wanna show you a little detail. So we've had, especially on 14K trailers, we've had some manufacturers over the years that use quarter inch plate on the ramp. Short track on these uses half inch. Uh, little chance that you would ever wear that ramp out. Very important too, this gets uh, hooked to the hook bar, keeps it from pulling away from the trailer. No chance of, uh, of having the ramp pull away from the trailer. Cross member spacing, short track doesn't do it a set distance like some manufacturers, they do them as needed. Uh, it's important because different hoist types all have different needs and push points and whatnot. I'd say on this trailer, roughly it looks to be about a 16, 18 inch on center. Also, you'll notice that's a four inch bed frame and that's a four inch cross member. If you look around the industry, a lot are gonna use a three inch cross member. So again, a lot of differences that play into these that you can't just look at a piece of paper and assume 
uh, some things. Sometimes they need pointed out. So it says, again, a sealed wiring harness ran in frame. I want to point out that the, uh, the brake junctions are all sealed, molded. Really like what they put together on this trailer. So ballpark for a, a, a angle, you're going to get about a 45 degree angle on this. I don't have my angle gauge out today, but uh, all these get about a 45 degree lift. This trailer is going to weigh in at about 3,000 pounds empty. It's going to give a net legal payload of about 7,000 pounds plus your tongue weight. It's going to pick up an easy 1,000 pound of tongue weight on a unit like this. This is also available in the 6x12 size as well. If you have any questions on this or any of our other trailers, feel free to give us a ring. 717-220-4220. Or you can visit us on the web at bestchoicetrailers.com.